fast det der. Okay, well, welcome everybody. Thank you for your attention. Glad to be here with all of you. So maybe we could just start with some introductions and maybe you could share something you've really enjoyed here at the conference in your intro, please. Right, so number one, I wish to get my name right, is Akina Ho, not Akina Ho. So it's A-K-I-N-A. So if we can, we can change that, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Um, so I actually uh, started very long time ago in the tech world and in the Web2 space in late 1990s, so you know how old I am now. Um, I am a digital transformer and innovator in the Web2 space. I left a cushy job to come into the Web3 space because I love the idea of helping and supporting women to move into the Web3 space, which we know is quite hard, right? And so I am a um, co-founder of a uh, all-star woman DAO. We're an investment DAO. We invest in companies and projects led by women or led by men who supports women. So that's what, I, and then one thing I love about this, I have met amazing uh, people here just by lining up, having, you know, waiting for my food. Isabella, she's here, hi, and, and him too. Just talking to people, they're so um, passionate, and I met a bunch of guys in the 23, about 23 years old, building a game, right? And then uh, I want to work with them, I want to be a part of their advisory team to help them grow into a unicorn. Because I helped build a unicorn before in like 18 months of my hire. So I want to do that. So I love the energy, the people, the player, the builders here. I really enjoy it and I mean it. Me too. I Jessica. I'm going to give you a high five, girl. High five. You yeah. go. All right. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. <laughs> All right. So I am De La Morta. I also have another uh, moniker um, in the real life. I have been in the entertainment business since I was a teenager. I was a radio host, a television host. Uh, and then I had a mentor who got me into financing. So I learned about uh, corporate finance at publicly traded companies, which led me to a deal with MGM, the movie studio in Los Angeles, where I worked for 15 years. And then when MGM sold to Sony, Bitcoin was coming into the world. And I had a friend who uh, told me about crypto and the future of blockchain. And I was very lucky to invest at that time. I invested so there. So you're a billionaire now or a millionaire? Um, Just well, wondering. it changes every day. <laughs> Six months ago. Um, not quite. I mean, I was very conservative but still participated. Um, but I also started a PR company and a production company. So I have different perspectives on a lot of different industries from finance, entertainment, being an entrepreneur, producing, working with hundreds of people to make something happen. And, you know, the Web3 is just an extension of all of that. And it gives me one place where I get to play with all my skill sets. And so one thing I love about this, and especially in the last couple of weeks, also doing a couple other panels with women in finance, um, is that it's so nice to see so many women being in this space. Like, you say tech, like when the internet came out, you know, 20 years ago, I remember I was actually a receptionist for a hot minute at an internet company, and I was the only woman I, wow. because I was the receptionist. But now you go to somewhere here, like there's a lot of women in the room. It's a much more equal playing opportunity. And I'd also like to take a moment to um, share with you, if you don't know, that this, this event was seeded by a woman. Yes. Cheska okay. Gonzalez had the flame of this idea and put this together. Yeah, so let's all clap for big Cheska. Big round of applause for Cheska. She's right out that door. She's but we right celebrate you. Kate, right? Just when you yeah, see this video, a, we're, we're celebrating you right now. So there are a lot of women on the team that actually produce this event. So that is a really big accomplishment in what I've seen over the last 20 years. And so on that note. Passing the baton. Uh, ta Tara really put together the programming for yeah. the whole event, yeah. for yeah. all the stages. So much of this has happened because of your diligent, uh, unstoppable hard work, and we honor you for that. But please introduce yourself and tell us something you've enjoyed and about this experience. And also very attractive, too. Oh my God, Beauty and brain, right? So. Right? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I should have put on more makeup, though, right? I had no time, actually, you know, to visit anybody. OK, this is Tara. So first, uh, thanks for being here, because um, I feel so relieved now, because it's third days of conferences and fifth days of like Philippines Blockchain Week as a part of organizer and then someone who 
in charge of like a whole stage plan. Yeah, I feel so it's honored tough to work. be here now. Tough yeah. work. My brain is actually not working right now because I was like here and there like every day. So maybe, yeah, if you spend like three days here, I'm sure that maybe you've seen me at least once. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, again, like my main star, I'm from Korea and running my own company, which is called the Hyped Collective. My background is more like a brand strategy and a marketing communication as a project management, you know, for integrated marketing communication. So um, I'm trying to actually connect the dots, you know, between brands, which wanted to build like the new community in Web3, and then of course the audiences, you know, like in the Web3, Web2 as well, and then also platforms like this or media, everything. So we tried to connect the dots, you know, like um, in three-dimensional space, you know, happening between Web2 and Web3. So I'm just like uh, trying to meet like uh, so many people in different world and in different background, and then everyone's actually insights and. So then, you know, whatever we can share with everybody can be a good resource for me to build a new thing. So on top of the experience here, actually, like, I'm planning to, with my partners, you know, planning to have, like, really great event in Seoul maybe next year. So I hope I can see you guys next year as well in Seoul. Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Belinda. I want to give thanks to the organizing committee. Because like two, two minutes before this start, Tara was texting me, where are you? <laughs> so I think they put, have to put a lot of hard work to, into whatever's happening right now. Um, so for me, I'm the co-founder of Mitri.io. So what we do is uh, we are non-custodial wallet helping to bridge Web2 to Web3. Uh, we're invested by the Prince of Brunei. Uh, we are invested by Kakao Games and well, Evos. If you are in eSports, you probably know Evos. Uh, I think the big thing that we are doing here is really to help more people get into the space in a very safe and like, controlled manner. And I think um, Philippines has proven that this could work, you know. Uh, like the whole entire world is like, hey, you know, Philippines, you know, GameFi has worked so well here. So right now, the country that I'm targeted uh, in, in Indonesia is following the footpath of like, footprint of like what Philippines has done. So I think it's something that I'm really focused on. Um, I'm still the Singapore representative of this community called Women in Blockchain Asia. So for Women in Blockchain Asia, we really want to bring in more women leaders into the space. So recently, we did our... Uh, a hackathon with Algorand. So we attracted over 200 participants and uh, it's in our honor, like in the finals, we have 50% female developers. Ooh, nice. Well, That's wonderful. And, and I think this is a huge achievement. I have some of my women in Blockchain Asia ladies here. So if you're interested, you can talk to them. Um, and great, that, thanks for putting me into this very important topic. <laughs> Thank you. So I'd like to talk about what can we do as an industry to attract more women uh, in all capacities, right? More women in leadership, more entrepreneurs that are women that we can invest in, more women that are looking to deploy capital and welcome them into this industry to invest in the entrepreneurs here, uh, more women developers. So what can we do as an industry? How can we be thoughtful about that uh, in order for us to make this even more diverse? Can we start with you? Yeah, okay. There's two things I want to talk about. I'm pretty blunt. I'm known for my... Uh, uh, you know, bluntness. Number one, you can join All Star Women. Uh, it's a DAO. We support uh, projects. We invest in projects. That's one thing. Just uh, you can find me on LinkedIn really easily. Uh, we are open to to that. Second thingy is for men to be stop being an asshole, right? So I was recently joined a uh, crypto uh, community. The first thing, my welcome message was from a guy, and asked me why is there no All Star Men. And what are you doing here? And I said, well, why don't you link up with me in LinkedIn? We can talk about it, you know, offline. And he says, are you a bloomer? I don't know what LinkedIn is. Like, you know, if you don't know what a bloomer is, it means that I'm very old, right? So a baby bloomer. And then, and then another guy chimed in and kind of questioned me, like, why I'm here? And then two other people questioned me, so aren't you in real estate? Aren't you working for an old traditional company? Why are you doing here? So I, I was really shocked. I, I didn't know they were attacking me until later on. I'm like, wait a minute, it seems like I'm being attacked, right? And then, then another female came and tried to help me out, right? And I, she's an all-star woman too, an ambassador. But I mean, like, number one, if any guy in the community see a woman being bullied, you should speak up and say, hey, asshole, Agreed. back off. We welcome Listen to her this. there. This is important. Right? So that's one thing I really... Um, and for those who are going to a lot of crypto parties, there's a lot of female bashing. There's a lot of female harassment that existed in the, in, around the world and the community. Uh, please stand up, speak on our behalf. We are still minority in this sector. 
If you want us to be in there, protect us, help us, and stand up for us. Thank you. I love that message. It's wonderful. Same question. So how can we... I have we... the same answer. Stop being an asshole. Um, I, I, think, uh, I think it's really a humanity issue, and I think... Um, What's exciting for me in the life I live, I do see a lot of evolution in people. I do see that this space is really open to a lot more opportunity and a lot, thing, a lot of things that are different, like outside of the norm. Everything from uh, people doing self-development courses, like really being connected to themselves. You and I have had talks about like emotional language. Like, I think it's a real amazing opportunity for men, actually, right now, to be men, but also be in touch emotionally. It's, there's a vulnerability to that that's also very attractive, but there's a balance there. And I know it's a struggle for men to come to that place, but that's when I think humanity will be at its peak, when there's that equality between men and women. Women can be uh, driving the bus and, like, you know, doing the work and being creative and being leaders, and men can also be um, vulnerable. It doesn't mean everybody's going to have all those positions at the same time, but exploring that and uh, being supportive of each other in that process will definitely make it a lot easier on all people. And um, yeah, I just think, you know, the culture, you know, creating a workspace that is uh, focused on the vision and supporting that because most of the work we're doing in the blockchain is very holistically for humanity. There's a lot of opportunity to solve problems and that's a really exciting place to be. Um, and it's much more fun when everybody's feeling supported and feels comfortable and can get to work and, and have those opportunities to solve the problems together. And that's just a really, like that's a, such an awesome vision and it's not that far away, but it takes people a moment to go, okay, cool, I can chill out. I don't have to be a dick right now. There you go. Don't point to him. <laughs> oh, Is that one of them? No. But he knows that. He knows <laughs> that. He's, I've said that Ian should be leading like courses in this and that we should be cloning. The first man we should clone should be Ian. Right. <laughs> uh, um, do you, yeah, I'll, I'll start first. Right. Okay. Go ahead. So um, I think that, uh, I have three points. I think the first point to be deliberate. So taking like our hackathon, for example, uh, when we work with seven universities in Malaysia, we ask them to at least include 30%. Otherwise, you can't work with us. So I think this is a really deliberate path on our part to make sure that the partners are also committed. So I think without that, uh, I, I will probably get the same kind of like, hackathon ratio. So I think that, that's number one, being really deliberate. Uh, I think number two is really having more female role role models, right, like yourself, because a lot of time we don't see a lot of successful path. We don't see that much. If you look at a, mo a panel, usually it's like one woman, if any. Oh, yeah. So I think we, we do need to have like more of these ladies like presented on stage or sh showing people like, hey, you know, I can do it, you so can you. So that this motivates them to be like, hey, you know, I'm going to ask someone who's done it before, I have a path to follow. I really and like that deliberate concept. Yes. Yeah, and I think the third part is, uh, it's a funny story, like, I think companies need to understand that like, women are really important in building better products, <laughs> right? Because um, here, here. It made a really funny example I realized recently, if you did even, even my team, so my t-shirt, my company t-shirt is designed by my male colleagues. And uh, if you see me on day one, uh, it's the big logo on my boobs area. <laughs> so I was like, guys, actually our shirt is not very female friendly. And I'm like, what's the name of my company? Um, look, look here. <laughs> so uh, I think that this is like a funny example, but it is actually really important, even like every single stage of your product. And um, the world is made of more than 50% women. Without that perspective in your team, it's hard to build anything good for everybody, right? So I think that that's where I feel like these three points are really important. Would you like to share some thoughts on how we can yeah. Welcome women into I, this industry I just, better. Yeah, I've been thinking just yeah, while friends were talking. Yeah, I just wanted to come back to the Beijing because I was thinking of myself and then what became a trigger, you know, to make me, for example, being here. Um, yeah, just, um, just 
I think uh, it's a self-reflection is very, very important in a lot of women somehow, because I'm a millennial, like you know, born in the 80s. And then even, yeah, when I was young, we just like uh, grew up with like all the Disney stories and then like Prince gonna save your life. And yeah, I mean, somehow like we need to change. <laughs> Yeah, our thinking that we have to really get out of the box. And then that's the first thing. That's the basics. I'm not going to talk about the, the, the businesses or projects. I mean, those are going to come, you know, like once you find yourself and then just change your environment, do something you've never done, and then date a lot. I learn a lot from the relationships. And then, of course, you know, we need a man in our lives. I'm not going to fix my car, you know, like by myself. So, <laughs> yeah, so I think we have to know, you know, what we are better than others, you know, for some specific things. And then at the end of the day, we have to live together, right? So like, we don't have to be like a man. Actually, like a man are men, and women are women. And then like we are like together in the world. So I think just a self-reflection is the first thing I want to say. And then if you don't know, you know what to do, if you don't know what you love right now, because a lot of people say like, do what you love. And then I didn't even know 10 years ago, I didn't even know like what I really want to do. So then change the environment, put yourself in totally different space, then you're gonna get to know. I've been producing blockchain events now for about five years, and I think maybe one of the great accomplishments that I'll look back at the last five years has been I've had almost half of the speakers at the events have been women. That's nice. And, and then I've interviewed about a thousand leaders, and almost half, so like four plus hundred have been women. I've learned so much from women. And I enjoy interviewing women much more than men because all of you think so much differently than me and it brings so much benefit to the way that I view things. So I'm gonna share a, a, a few gals that really stand out to me as leaders and I'd love for all of you to think through who are some women that you can kind of tell us about so that all of us have a tangible next step in terms of we've talked about how we can be more inclusive, how can we welcome women and so maybe who are some women that we could look to? So some examples for, for me would be Kelly from Mint Gold Dust. I remember she came to us at NFT NYC at like the first event and said, you need way more women. Like, and we just said, well, okay, can, can you help us, right? And so I think a lot of times women can stand up and say, this should be different, and then actually be the one to enact that change. Or Josie Bellini, one of the great crypto artists who launched Cyber Brokers, uh, very excited about who she is as a leader. Avery leading the charge at Vayner uh, 3, Gary Vaynerchuk's uh, division. Uh, and so there's all these amazing women, right? You think of coin artists who launched uh, blockchain art and the whole thing of finding uh, tokens inside of art and then launching Neon District and Plasma Bear and uh, through Blockade Games. So, so many amazing women. Are there any gals that you could tell us about that we could uh, check out ourselves and be inspired by and maybe support one way or another? Well, for me, it's uh, Leila Herstel. She's the founder of All Star Women. Uh, when she first started the concept, she was 19. I met her when she was 21, beginning of the year. And then she was the one who kind of welcomed an open arm and said, come in uh, to All Star Women, uh, work with me, build with me. So like she's young, right? So she, just, she never worked in the corporate world. I have for a long time. So I kind of gave her a lot of concept, building chapter leaders, building different consulting team within the DAO to support other women and other companies for free. She was all open for it. And then what really inspired me was that at such a young age, she had the concept of building a DAO to support women in the space, to invest in them. And statistically, if you don't know, in the world, all VC funding that goes to women is less than 3% of the pool. 3%, this means that 97% of the funding goes to male projects. What's wrong with women, right? So there must be a, 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 an initiative, a movement to change that gender gap. And I think, for me, She's an amazing role model for me, from what I know. For such a young age, does mean that anyone here can be a leader, can start something within the Web3 space just because you have a passion. And I think that is the most amazing part. And in her heart, and her, it's very genuine. She's really smart, and she learned really fast, and she executes, which is really important. It's just not thinking and visualizing and, and having a vision, but to execute. She actually fork out a lot of her own money. You know, luckily she comes for money, so she can do that. And then her, and she's sacrificing her school to run this, you know, full time. So to me, that's my hero. How about for you, Jessica? Who stands out to you that you could tell us about that we can celebrate and learn from? So 
I have like 11,000 people in my phone. And I, I don't want to recognize just one woman because I know so many amazing women. Um, but I'm going to just read off a couple women that I think are accessible. So any of the women in the room here, and actually any of the men in the room here, if you wish to reach out to any of these people, I'm telling you right now, if you do, they will respond to you. If you have a question, if you need some help, they will help. You, can, you don't even need to use my name, but if you want to, you can, but they will respond. So one of them is Adrienne Ashley. I love her so much. <laughs> she might be the funniest woman she in the world. She is super great. So brilliant. If you call her, make sure you have two hours because she'll talk your ear off. Uh, Brittany Kaiser. Brittany Kaiser is famous for being a whistleblower on... Um, uh, yeah, she was in the social network. Yes, the social network. And then she was part of Brock Pierce's campaign. Yes. Uh, Joyce Chow. Joyce Chow started I Hollywood Film. Uh, it's the first film festival to offer NFTs as awards for the filmmakers. Uh, Heidi Gilman is a phenomenal promoter, artist, educator. She is one of the most active people out there teaching artists how to turn their art into NFTs. Um, I'm going to leave with maybe three more here. Elise Sam. Elise Sam, she's spoken at NFT NYC. This woman can write so fast, I can't even keep up to her. She is amazing. Um, my, I have a client, Amanda Terry, who is uh, the head of MetaGood and OnChain Monkey. The OnChain Monkey community is really, really active. Incredible. Um, so amazing. They've spoken at NFT NYC. She just finished raising like $11 million. She heads up these two companies. She's supported by a man named Bill Tai, who's famous in the Bill space. Yes. And then, of course, again, I'd like to recognize, I mean, there's so many women on the team, Tara, Janelle, Francis. I, there's a whole list of women that help produce this event. But again, Cheska Gonzalez has been actively working here on the ground. She created the Women of a Substance NFT. So, you know, you've got a lot of access to women here in the Philippines, but that's some women around the world that you have access to. Such a great list. Thank you. Tara, please share with us. Uh, actually, you know, I'm in charge of the stage as well, and then, like, we're running out we of hit time. hit zero, so yeah. that's it. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, everybody, let's give the panel a hand. Yes, is that what you're saying? It's the time? Yeah, we have to end. You want to have okay. something? I, I feel like this yeah, panel should go for another hour, but yeah. maybe two They're minutes. They're going to start chanting, five more minutes, five, like one more song. Wait, but let me name Thank someone off attention. really quick. I, I, I think I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 All right. Well, sorry if I took up all the Let's time, but thank you Let's so much. Yeah, Good luck, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Good luck, everybody. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. See you next year.